Hi, it's Alex. Today I want to talk about grad school, and I want to share my experience moving from undergrad to graduate school, because my experience has glaringly contradicted, glaringly conflicted with virtually everything anyone ever told me about what grad school was like. And uh, it, was, it was kind of rude awakening for me, not pleasant. And I'm going to say something really harsh, I mean, you've probably seen it already in the headline of this video. I think that for me, grad school felt like I was regressing back to high school. High school wasn't all bad for me. Um, I wasn't super motivated in high school, and part of that was that I felt like it was a little bit, there was a lot of rote learning, it wasn't at the highest level of sophistication. And when I went away to college, I feel like I really started to shine intellectually and academically. Like, when I got to college, first of all, I went to Oberlin College in Oberlin, Ohio. It's a small liberal arts college. And when I got there, I felt like the classes were at a whole higher level of sophistication. I was given a lot of assigned reading, and the professors would expect you to do the reading before class and they would teach the class as if you had done the reading, so you would be pretty lost if you hadn't done it. And there was a lot of self-directed work. I had to structure my own time, I had to pace myself, and as I progressed in my education and I started taking higher level classes, I found that the level of sophistication and the degree to which I was expected to be self-directed and self-motivated continually increased. Um, I got a pretty diverse education there, I took classes in a lot of different subjects, but I ended up majoring in math. And when I get to the, got to the higher level math courses, there was lots and lots of stuff that was just given to you to do on your own. So for example, by the time I got to my senior year, almost all of the tests were take-home tests. There were very few in-class exams. And the take-home tests, some of them, they would give you like eight hours to do them, some of them had a shorter time period, and there was an honor code, and it was understood that you were just going to do these on your own time, subject to whatever constraints you were given. I don't know anyone who ever told me that they cheated on any of these tests. Like, people didn't even talk about like taking more time than was allowed. People seemed to take it pretty seriously. Another example of the sort of self-directed work that I encountered at Oberlin, uh, I took an advanced calculus class towards the end of my time there, and the teacher for this class had an, an interesting policy on homework. He would assign homework problems, and he said the homework is not graded, and you're not required to turn any of it in. But he would encourage you to turn it in if you were unsure about any of it. So I would do this occasionally. So if I wasn't sure of something, I would turn it into him, or I'd go to office hours, and I'd say like, I think I have this, but I'm not sure. And he would go over it, and he would either be like, yeah, this is right, or he would show you what's wrong and show you how to fix it. And I learned so much doing that, and it was like, I don't know, like I felt like it laid the groundwork for me to do math on my own, to just go to the library and pick up high-level books and start working through them. I started doing that a little bit when I was at Oberlin and to start researching things on my own. And the picture I had, the mental picture I had of grad school, was that it was going to continue on this trajectory. That if I pursued a PhD in mathematics, going to grad school was going to be more like that. It was going to be more independent research, more self-directed research, uh, less like high school. So what happened is that I went to grad school. I went to University of Delaware, um, to their math department. I was in a master's PhD program, and it wasn't like what I expected. It was more like high school. I found that the time scale of the problem sets was shorter again. Instead of having these long open-ended problem sets that would take two, three, four weeks to complete, it was all like weekly problem sets. Um, the level of intellectual sophistication wasn't as high, but the volume of work was pretty high, so it just felt like a grind to me. And I was also just shocked to find that all the tests were proctored. And I'm like, wait a second, I went from this honor code environment that was totally, they trust you, 
Um, you're taking a lot of long take-home tests on your own time, there are a lot of really hard open book tests, and it's back to the sort of traditional two-hour exam in class with some guy watching over your shoulder kind of deal. And I'm just thinking, like, what kind of message does this send to me? It just felt like a regression. It felt a little bit insulting to me. I've never cheated on anything in my entire life. Uh, perhaps a game of cards with my friend, but I mean I've never cheated on anything academic in school. It's just not something I would do. I feel like I'd be cheating myself. And like, you'd think in a PhD program, wouldn't you feel the same way? Like, I was there to learn, I was there because I loved mathematics, I wanted to engage with mathematics. I don't know, it, it was just weird to me. And like, overall, like, the structure of the program and the culture in the program, like, people were so focused on getting the next assignment done that they weren't doing anything self-directed. Like, I was expecting an environment in graduate school where people would sit around the lunch table and they'd be like, hey, like, I was thinking about this interesting problem, and blah blah blah, and people would talk about it. Because that's what it was like at Oberlin, and I was expecting it to be more like that. Uh, I was expecting things like, hey, like, I started working on this new area, like, it's not really related to what I'm doing, but I just thought it was cool, and I got this book out of the library, like, that's how I am. That's especially with mathematics, but like with anything, I'm just like that. And I wanted to be in that kind of environment. Like, that's why I went to grad school. I went to grad school expecting that and wanting to be around that. And it was just like, bleh. It was just like this really like soul crushing environment, really like low level of sophistication, but high volume of work. And like, it's no wonder I don't have a PhD. I left that program with a master's degree. Um, there were some professors in that department who really wanted me to stay, who really wanted me to come back even. And it's like, if you want me to stay, and if you want people like me to stay and to be attracted to your program, wouldn't you want to create the kind of environment that people like me would want to be in? Like, think about that for a minute. It seems really, really obvious to me but it conflicts with a lot of the things that the professors in this department would say. I felt like my way of thinking was just totally out of harmony with the culture of the department. It was really difficult for me, uh, really emotionally painful two years for me, being in that program. I want to make clear, I have a lot of respect for the professors in the program at University of Delaware, some of them were really supportive to me, and some of them did push me to that higher level of sophistication. That doesn't change the fact that the overall character of the program, and structure of the program, and culture of the program felt like a regression back to high school. So, I have no idea how universal my experience is, I do know, though, that I have visited a lot of grad schools, I've talked to a lot of people who are in grad school in a lot of different areas, at a lot of different universities, and I know that this problem exists at other universities. So I know this is not just the peculiarity of this one program, this is a systemic problem in graduate level education. So I'm hoping that this can reach a broader audience of other people at other schools where these problems exist, and I hope we can start changing this culture. I think PhD programs and master's programs too could be so much more. Like, you have all the ingredients, you have people who have already completed their undergraduate education, and they're ready for a higher level of sophistication. And like, if you treat them like that, you can draw that out. Like, think of how much more the students could do, think of how much more prepared they're going to be for doing their dissertations when they get to that point, if you continue helping them to get more self-directed and um, independent in their thinking and learning. Yeah, seems really obvious to me. I don't know. I'd love to hear from you. What do you have to say about this? Uh, does this resonate with you at all? Um, yeah, please share in the comments if you have any further discussion you want to provoke about this. Yeah, thank you.